There are people that are anointed, but their anointing is not relevant in your life and destiny. But a lot of people think that everybody that you see that is anointed can affect your destiny. Every destiny deserves to be fulfilled, but not every destiny is fulfilled. And not every destiny will be fulfilled. But if fulfilling your God-given destiny is your goal, is your desire, is what you long for, then you need empowerment to fulfill destiny. Because there is no man that is born of a woman that on his own can fulfill destiny. Destiny is too big. Destiny is too complicated. Destiny is so attacked that if you are not empowered, you will know that you have destiny. You, you, people will tell you that they can see your destiny is great, but you will never fulfill it. Jesus, our Lord, in all his almightiness, in Luke chapter 24, if you read verse 49, he said to the disciples, he said, Tarry ye in Jerusalem until you are endued with power. He said to them, and NIV version put it this way, he said, until you are clothed, until you are clothed with power, until you are clothed with power. But Jesus gathered all these guys and then gave them, showed them their destiny. And yet, when he was going, these are guys who were already healing the sick. The Bible says he sent them out and then they went to heal the sick. And when they came back, they were rejoicing that they healed the sick. And he said, don't rejoice just that you, the devil ran out because of you. He said, but rejoice that your name is written in the book of life. So these guys were already set in the line of their destiny. But Jesus said, sit down in Jerusalem until you are empowered to fulfill ministry. Because at this stage of your life, if you dive into it, you will be killed. So he says, sit down until you are endued with, you are clothed with power from on high to fulfill destiny. I think there is one or two people here who need, it is time to sit down. You've been running around for too long. Sit down so that you'll be empowered. You don't believe that? In Acts chapter 19, if you read from verse 13, the Bible said there are certain guys, the sons of the prophet, of the priests, of the Jew called the seven sons of Sceva. The Bible said one day they went out to preach. Because they were sons of the priest. They've been in the church. But they were never empowered. So when they met with a madman, they said to the madman, in the name of Jesus whom Paul preaches, we cast you out. The man said to him, to them, Jesus we know. Paul we know. Please. They check their list. His name, their name was not there. They say, who are you? We knew the day Jesus was empowered. Uh -uh. Were you not there when John was baptizing him? And then the Bible said that heaven opened. Ah, are you there? Are you, did you notice what John said to, Jesus said to John? Jesus came to John and said, I, I want to be baptized. John said, no, you are the one who should baptize me. I know who you are. You are the one who should baptize me. You are God himself. You should be the one. He said, no, 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 no. It becometh of us to fulfill all righteousness. He said, John, I came now. You are ahead of me. As well as that. You see, I came now as a man. You are to baptize me. Commission me into ministry. He said, for that is how to fulfill all righteousness. John said, what? Bible said, as soon as Jesus subjected himself to that commission in heaven, open. And the father announced, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Are you following him? Say, yes, sir. Paul, on his way to Damascus, encountered Jesus. Jesus knocked him down. And he said, what should I do? He said, go into the city of Damascus. You will be told what to do. I've prepared a man called Ananias. He will lay hand on you and empower you for ministry. So we know the day Jesus was empowered. We know the day Paul was empowered. You, where are you coming from? The Bible says he beat, the, he, one single man beat the hell. He beat their clothes off their body. Seven guys, even though they were sons of the priest. So the fact that you are in the church does not mean you are empowered for your assignment. You could be in the church for donkey years. And for one day, the anointing never rested on you for the assignment God 
has prepared for you. Are you with me so far? Are you following me so far? Yes, because I need you to understand this. Destiny is not because you work so hard. Destiny, you don't fulfill destiny because you're smart. The world is so cruel. The Bible said in 1 John chapter 5, verse 19, that the world lies in wickedness. The world is so cruel, so, so cruel, that you can't fulfill destiny by speaking phonetics. Satan doesn't respect grammar. And if you come from my side of the world, witches and wizards, they don't respect grammar. You know my village? Have you heard of Ubodu? You can never hear it. It's not in the map. <laughs> but we are, we are, my, my people are known for witchcraft. You are either a witch or you are a Christian. I don't mean church goer. As a child growing up, my parents were born again Christian. One day as a child. I'm not talking about dream. As a child, I was lifted from the mat. We don't sleep in foam, mat. Lifted from the mat. Our house was not sealed, so they were trying to carry me out from the roof. I'm not talking about dream. I'm not talking about dream. That's where I'm coming from. So I can tell you about destiny and how to be empowered for destiny. Are you following me, sir? When I came to Lagos, I traveled home and then my uncle's wife carried my clothes. Went to a native doctor so that I would be a useless. I would come back home and be digging grave. You know, you know sometimes when Apostle is teaching, I can, I can relate with what is not talking theory to me. It's, it's talking practical. And the man said, he said, the list of the court he belonged to was witchcraft. Witchcraft was the list. He belongs to 28 courts. The man that they gave to give, do the charm. The revelation came out when I got married. The woman that was there when they brought my clothes. When they, when they, they told her that I was the one who married, she said, it's not possible. That was where the whole thing came out. You want to fulfill destiny? Yeah, I'm telling you. God forbid that I walk into this place to tell you lie or to bamboozle you. I'm telling you what has happened. Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. Who are you? We've checked our list. Your name is not there. No, your name is not there. Are you still with me? What's the anointing? Anointing is not oil. Anointing is not a dove. Neither is it water. All these, all these are representative measures. They are mediums, physical representative of communicating the anointing. They are not anointing. So I can pour oil on you and I just tend your clothes. I didn't anoint you. I'm going to tell you how to, when I'm pouring oil on you, what to do. To ignite the anointing. Because the anointing can be there. And I'm pouring oil on you. And the, anoint, the oil will flow. But the anointing won't flow. So that's why you have gone to several meetings. And save so many oil and water has been poured on you. And you still walk home the same person. The problem is not the anointing. The problem is not the anointed. The problem is you. And I'm going to show you where, how the problem is you. Am I communicating here? Yes. Are you sure you're still following me? Yes. So, the fact that you went for a program and then this happened and then that happened and then does not mean that the anointing has been administered to you. So, what's the anointing? It is God's authority resting on a man for a particular assignment. That's why in Matthew 17, the Bible said Jesus came down from the mountain. And then a man ran to him and said, I brought my, my son that is epileptic. Your, your servants couldn't heal him. 
And then Jesus said, how long will I be with you? Oh, you have little, bring the child to me. And then they said to the master, how come we couldn't heal this guy? I could have authority in some area and I don't have in some area. I could have authority but my authority is not as his authority. Because we didn't become, we didn't begin the journey the same day. For those of you who don't understand Ibo, the, the one that started cooking before you, we have more broken pots. And that's experience. So there are things he will look at now and he will smile and I'm shaking. The reason why he smiles is that he has met it several times. And I'm just meeting it for the first time. Do you understand what I'm saying here? So the anointing is God's authority resting on a, a man for a particular assignment. It is heaven's certificate of endorsement and appointment. It is heaven's certificate of endorsement and appointment. It is the approval of a man by God. The anointing is the appointment of heaven that enables a man to function effectively in a particular area of life and ministry. So when you are struggling in that area and he walks in, you wonder if you are called. Are you full of saying, sir? You know, when I pass to walk into a church and start talking to people, I start asking myself, is it the same people I pastor every day? <laughs> Are you full of saying, sir? But you know, I'm super excited. I'm super excited. And when he leaves, when he says, that's my mentor, he's my brother. <laughs> you know, he's, he's my, and I'm excited, super excited, because that's his area of anointing. God has certified him and approved him in that area. In that, listen to me, sir. You will be a fool to contest with him in that area because you don't contest swimming with a fish inside the water. <laughs> Talking about anointing. Because you must understand who this man is, what God has anointed him for, and what God has called him to do. If you don't, that's the number one way. That's the first place to start endorsement. If you don't, you will be a round peg in a square hole. And you'll be wondering, I've been in this church now, I've been in this church. So many people are walking to that church, sir, and they will tell me, how come new people will just walk into this church and receive miracle and walk away? I say you are the ancient of days. Stay there. So it's not oil. It's an appointment. Jesus said in Luke chapter 4, 4 verse 18, he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because... Why is the spirit of the Lord is upon me? Because I have been anointed. I've been ordained. I've been appointed. It's my assignment. So listen to me, sir. Don't pray for anointing if you have no assignment. Don't pray for empowerment if you have nothing doing. The spirit of the Lord is because he has I have been appointed to preach the gospel to the poor, to set the captives free. To, are you from saying, sir? Jesus begin to enumerate what his assignment is, and that is the reason for the anointing. If those appointments were not given to him, there will be no need. For the anointing. So, understand the anointed. Understand that God wouldn't anoint you if there is no appointment. What's destiny? Destiny is simply God's idea for your life. God's design for your life. How God has planned and patterned that your life must go. In Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5, he said, Jeremiah, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I know you and I have ordained you. The word ordained there is a Hebrew word called Natan. It means I have given you. I have chosen and appointed you to be prophet to nations. So if you get up and say, I want to become a businessman when I've appointed you a prophet, because listen to me listen let me let me change your orientation and let me blow your mind a bit the fact that you are a successful businessman does not mean you are in destiny the fact that look 
I was given a chief tenancy title in my village does not mean you are progressing in the destiny of God. Every destiny that God has designed, God has designed that destiny to affect and expand his kingdom. So when a destiny is not affecting God's kingdom, he's outside God's destiny. Hi, let me come home. I have, I'm a, a successful businessman, sir, and I have all the money. It's a tool for my destiny. I've not started destiny. Until that money that is a tool becomes an instrument in my hands to enhance the kingdom. If it's not enhancing the kingdom, I am not yet in my destiny. I have acquired the tool. I took the tool by are you with me here, sir? I took the tool by force. I worked hard. I did everything I can to get the tool. Now I've gotten the tool. What is the tool for? To buy the latest Lexus Jeep. To sleep in all the hotels in Lagos. I used to tell my, my sons, I said, we travel holy and come back holy. You know why? Now, nah, if you give witches in my village loophole, there's no two ways about it. They will bring your corpse home. Am I still communicating here? Destiny is not what you became. Destiny is what you are created for. Oh, I eventually became a successful businessman. Oh, I became, eventually became a doctor. Oh, I eventually became a lawyer. Oh, the other day I brought a family to see because they were having problems to see apostle. And when apostle looked at the young man, he said, you are a lawyer, but you are not supposed to be a lawyer. You are supposed to be a medical personnel. Ah! Error! But you know, the guy, you know when the guy has been telling me, he said, I don't know why my father pushed me to, he just out of arrogance and then pride that my son is a lawyer. That's why my, my father pushed me to go and read law. I never wanted to read law. Parents, praise the Lord. Because the Bible told you, teach a child the way he should go, not the way you want him to go. There is a way he should go. That's his destiny. What God has created him for. There is a way he should go. So I hustled. I hustled. Pastor, you don't know. I hustled and hustled and hustled and I hustled and I made money. For what? Oh, I acquired all the certificate. I'm a PhD holder now. For what? Oh, you don't understand. I have all the connections in the world. I can talk to any president. For what? What's the aim? What's the goal? So you think that God enable you to travel and not the president of this world just to come back and lie down and sleep. Then God must be, something must be wrong. Then the idea of God must be an error. Any destiny that is not affecting the kingdom it's not yet destined. It has not been discovered. He's just still roaming around. So in the sight of God, in the sight of God, the fulfillment of a destiny is not measured by how much money you have. It's not measured by how many cars that are packed in your garage. It's not measured in the area of uh, Lagos that you live. It is measured by how much you have enhanced the kingdom of God. When I see a rich man who doesn't give. I don't get bothered. Because the fact that you are rich. Does not mean you should give. Rich people don't give. It's only blessed people that give. They don't sponsor the kingdom. They don't. You know. <laughs> the, go and check them. One major reason why. The work of God becomes a problem to them is because they feel that they got what they got by their strength. Go and check it. Have you had people make the statement like, I worked so hard. I worked, I worked, I worked so hard to, to, to be where I am today. What a statement. What a statement. Have you seen hard workers before? 
I bought iron one day in Orile, and a truck pusher pushed the iron from Orile to Bariga. And he told me his money is 3,000 naira. When he came, I, I gave him, I gave him 5,000. Because the sweat that has gone out of that guy's body. I said, that, you know, I entered my, and I lifted up my hand. I said, Father, thank you that I'm not a truck pusher. From Orile. I don't know how many of you know where they sell you on that, but to Bariga. You know you worked hard. That's why you are where you are. You worked very hard. You, you, you worked very hard. I, I know you worked very hard. So my question is this. You've got destiny, right? What's your destiny doing for the kingdom? Revelation chapter 4 verse 11 says, Thou art worthy, O God, to receive glory, honor, and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are, and we are created. You are created to bring God pleasure. So if your life is not bringing God pleasure, God doesn't smile because you are alive. God doesn't smile because you do this. God doesn't, there's no problem or prayer requests that come to God. And God just look and said, who will solve this for me now? Mm, where's Sister Elizabeth? Where's Sister Bridget? Where's Sister? And then just say, don't worry. Holy Spirit, touch his heart. Her heart, she's gonna, I know she will obey me to do it. If you've not gotten to that state, you don't have destiny yet, my friend. So your own prayer this morning should be, Lord, show me my destiny. But that you have found out and that you are already in line in the expansion of the kingdom. Your life is already affecting the kingdom. I want to show you how to do it better. Now, how do I get empowered to be able to fulfill it? Because the Bible says it's not by power nor by might, but it's by my spirit, says the Lord. It's not by power. He went ahead again. He said, it's not of he that will it nor run it. It's of God that showeth mercy. I'm telling you. Now me, now me, this one. They carry in clothes. Go, hey. Eh. Say, make it come back to village and be digging grave. Oh, my dear, you, you, you know, you know, it opened my eyes that it's not everybody you see. Every time they are doing burial, they are the one receiving cups, putting it on the it, it, it is not all of them that desire to be there. Some of them, somebody kept them there and said, That's where you're going to be. And they are fulfilling it. How do I get empowered? To fulfill destiny. Abraham was 75 years and yet nothing. Until God came. So the number one way. To get empowered. For destiny. Is that God himself directly empower you. But before this happens, there are three criteria you must meet. Number one is that you are holy to the teeth. Consecration. That you are holy to the teeth. Number two is that you are a prayer machine. Number three is that you are a giver. When these three happens, I will show you from all the scriptures I'm going to show you. For instance, being empowered directly from God. These three things must be in faith. They are the foundation for either anyhow the empowerment will come to come. In First Kings chapter 3, the Bible talked about Solomon. One day he was asleep and God came himself. He didn't send anybody. And said, what do you want me to do for you? He said, Lord, you know I'm a small boy. And these people you have sent me to, to pastor. These people you have sent me to rule over. They are strong guys. You know them. Give me wisdom and understanding to rule them. Empower me with wisdom and understanding to govern them. And God said, you've got it. I'll give it to you. And because you have not asked for wealth or the neck of your enemies and the rest of them, I will give you much more. But, read further from verse 3. Before God came, the Bible said that Solomon offered a thousand bond offering. He broke record. 
The Bible started by telling us that Solomon loved God. And because he loved God, he wasn't because of his love for God and for the kingdom of God. He gave a thousand bond offerings. No king before him has been able to do that. Not even his father David, the man after God's own heart. No king after him did that. So when Solomon did it, God said, I'm not sending any messenger. I will go myself. Solo? Kilaenwa? What are you looking for? Are you here with me? God himself came and empowered Solomon all by himself. He didn't have to send anybody. But you see, Dave, Solomon also met a requirement. So you could. God himself can empower you in the place of prayer, in the place of encounter. But you must meet that requirement of either the fact that you are a giver, you are a prayer machine, or your own holiness. Even your teeth is holy. When you have, even when you have not brushed it, it's holy. You understand what I'm saying, sir? But you see, I don't know about you, but choose one. <laughs> Out of the three, there is one that I choose. I won't tell you. Uh, because the one of holiness requires that you must not shout at your wife. Oh. If you shout at your wife, you've committed sin. You get angry at your malam at the gate. What is wrong with you? Are you stupid? You have committed sin. Huh? Uh -huh. Because you must not allow your mouth to air. The other one is that you are prayer, 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 prayer. Now, most of the time, let me say 90 to 98% of the time, God doesn't come himself. He sent men. Men. Why? Everything you are looking for no longer comes from heaven. From the dead, the Holy Ghost was given to man. There's nothing you are looking for that comes from heaven anymore. Have you not read Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3? God has blessed us with all spiritual blessing in heaven. He has. He's not going to. He has blessed us. He's not going to. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, if you read from verse 9, he said there is nothing new. That what has been is what will be. He said there's nothing new. Nothing new. There's no anointing. There's no kind of anointing you're looking for. There's no kind of wealth you're looking for. There's no kind of wisdom you're looking for. There's nothing you're looking for that is new. God has deposited it in a man. Listen. When you find favor before God, he order your step to that man. But when you get to that man, what do you do? In 1 Samuel chapter 10, Saul was going to look for his father's ass. He had no destiny. Saul, as at that age, sir, was still living with his father. At home, his own destiny as at that time was going to look for acts. He was a messenger boy, even though he was a son. So he was going to look for it. And then in Acts chapter 10, the Bible said he encountered Samuel. And Samuel said to him, you will eat with me today in the high place. And the Bible said that Samuel anointed Saul. He poured the horn of oil. And when he anointed Saul, the Bible said when he anointed him, Saul became another man. Aye. Saul became another man. What he was changed, metamorphosed into the man that God had destined him to be. He was destined to be the first king of Israel. But he was a servant boy to his father. Until he met Samuel. When he met Samuel, Paul was a shy guy. Paul was so sheepish. So, I mean, so rather, cannot do anything on his own until he's assigned. Have you met people like that? When you say go and buy things in market, which market? When you say go and do it, how will I do it, sir? Saul was like that until he encountered Samuel. When he encountered Samuel, he went as a servant boy, as an errand boy. He came back as a king.
be favor you. They will. He met. He said, "You met a particular one that interested me." He said, "Of bread, they will give you two, and they will take one." When you are clothed and empowered with the anointing for fulfillment of destiny, men goes out of their way to see to the fulfillment of your destiny. It is not of their making. They are under the compulsion of God. They are under a mandate that you must do it. When you are under the empowerment of God's anointing, men displease themselves to make you happy. First Samuel chapter 16. The Bible said there was also a rejected boy called David, the son of Jesse. David was an illegitimate son. He was the son of Jesse's concubine. That's why he said in Psalm 50, in iniquity did my mother conceive me. No legitimate woman conceiving iniquity. So he was so rejected. All the se other seven sons, legitimate sons, were at home with their father. They were princes. Only him was at the back of the desert, taking care of the sheep, risking his life with lions and bears. Yet he was the chosen of God. His destiny was to be king. Listen to me, sir. Your destiny has nothing to do with your background. It has nothing to do with where you are born. As a matter of fact, the poorer your background, suspect that the greater your destiny is. If you see yourself still functioning at the same level of your bloodline, and as a child of God, something is wrong. You need to go and look for your prophet. Because, let me also say this here, that everybody can be your prophet. You know, you are so blessed. I'm telling you, Christ Link, you are so blessed having an apostle. God said to Samuel, take your horn of oil. Go to Jesse's house. Go anoint for me a king. A man after my, I found a man after my own heart. They got there, David was not at home. The Bible says, Elia passed before God. God said, no, I know his heart. He's not going to, if I anoint him, he's not going to use it for my kingdom. The Bible said, Abinadab passed. He said, no. Shama passed. He said, no. Seven of them passed. God said, no. When God rejects a man, it's not that he hates a man. He has checked you out. Your heart. Your heart. You've been praying, you've been praying. Apostle, I've been anointing and anointing and anointing. You've given him hard labor. And God is not responding. Your heart. He knows that the only reason why you are trusting God for that breakthrough is that once you come back from that trip, you are going to your chief village to take chief tensing title. You are not going to come to church to say thank you. He knows. So, when God wanted to empower Saul, Samuel, when he wanted to empower David, Samuel, when he wanted to empower the first high priest of Israel and his household, do you know, listen to me, sir. The very high, first high priest of Israel, Leviticus chapter 8, read from verse 1. Aaron, God took Moses and said, anoint him. God didn't come himself and say, this is a high priest. God was to anoint Joshua. When God was to anoint Joshua, in Numbers chapter 27, the Bible said, he said, Moses, take him, bring him out from the congregation and, and empower him to lead them into the promised land. God didn't have to come to do it. In Numbers 11, when he wanted to anoint 70 elders that was going to work with Moses, he said, I will take from the spirit that is upon you and I will put on top of all of them. He didn't have to come down to do it. Because I've had people say, is he my God? Is he my God? He's not El Shaddai. I know he's not El Shaddai, but go, you shall die. Are you still here with me? Paul said to Timothy, in 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 6, he said, neglect not the gift that is in you by the putting on of my hands. God didn't give you. When I lay my hand, I transfer the gift. Yes, sir. I guess, sir. Go and read your Bible. 
In 1 Timothy 4.14, he said, stir up the gift that was deposited in you by the laying on of hand of the elders of the church, the presbyters of the church. God didn't put it there. Men deposited them. He says, stir up those gifts. Now I'm talking about, are you here with me? Are you sure you're still here with me? I'll close now. In 1 Kings chapter 19, if you read from verse 15 down, when Elijah got angry and said, Lord, I'm tired, I'm tired, and God said, get up. Go. On your way to Damascus, there are three guys I want you to anoint. He said, anoint Elisha to take your place. Anoint Hazel to become king of Syria. He said, anoint Jehu to become the king of Israel. Three. He said, the one that the sword of Elijah missed, the sword of Jehu will kill. The one of the, that the sword of Jehu missed, the sword of Hazel will kill. Three guys at the same time on assignment. The Bible said Elijah went because he was an angry prophet. Disgruntled, already tired. He saw Elisha. The Bible said he casted his mantle power upon the guy and walked away. The guy didn't say, oh God, what did they worry you? The guy understood. The guy picked the mantle and ran after him. He said, what is it? Why are you running after me? What, is the, what, what business do I have? Read your Bible. That was what Elijah, Elijah said to him. What business do I have to do with you? What is it? The Bible said, the, man, the guy said, I'm coming. It doesn't matter how you insult me. My destiny is important to me. You are carrying what my destiny needs. Now you shall be your guy. They come. He went back. The Bible said he killed all the oxen, shared it through party, and ran to minister to Elijah. And the Bible said he poured water in the hands of Elijah all through the days of Elijah. You know the story. In 2 Kings chapter 1, when Elijah was to be taken off, Elijah said, they started their journey in Giga. He said, stay here. The Lord has sent me to... Uh, to uh, Giga from Giga to Bethel. He said, they get to Bethel. He said, stay here. He said, from Bethel to Jericho. He said, stay here. From Jericho to Jordan. From Jordan to across Jordan. He said, as long as the Lord live it and as long as your soul live, I will not leave you. Where you die, I will die. He followed. I'm beginning to tell you now how to get how to provoke empowerment. How to provoke the anointing for empowerment because it's not enough to lay hand on you. Have you provoked the anointing? You see, God said, in those days when God said to a prophet, fill your horn. When you pour the oil into that horn, it's like a what? That was why Elijah, uh, uh, Samuel said, surely this is the Lord's anointed. But he tried to pour it on Elia, but it didn't flow. Because it will congeal like a what? But when he meets the right head, he flow. So the question is not the oil. The question is, is your head the right head? Are you from here, sir? Let me tell you how to make your head the right head. Look at the three guys. Study your Bible when I go. Go and read every scripture I quote. These three guys were to be anointed by Elijah. But eventually, sir, only one was anointed. Every time I read that scripture, I weep. I weep. I weep. I weep. Only one was empowered. I hope you know that Elisha was not the only son of prophet following Elijah. But he was the one who poured water in his hands. Ogami, sir, are you, are you ready to eat now? Your food is ready. Uh, this is water to wash hands. When it's done, sir, the water to, uh, this is the napkin to clean your hands, sir. Uh, are the clothes ready for washing, sir? And then he will wash the clothes. And uh, This boy you're seeing here, I washed my pastor's clothes for years. There was one Sunday morning, sir, my pastor gave me six slaps on Sunday morning. Six. I said, my friend, go and lead the prayer. I said, yes, sir. So don't envy that we go to America today, go to South Korea tomorrow, go to, don't envy us. You don't know where we are coming from. Six slap Sunday morning. Sir, you want to know what I did? I will tell you. As a praise and worship leader, young minister, you know, bouncing. <laughs> a sister wrote me a letter. Letter. 
And then I collected the letter, put it at the back of my pocket. I didn't read it. I didn't open it. And he said, what letter is that? So this is what, give me the letter. And I, he collected the letter and gave me six slabs. Put the letter in his pocket. Till today, I don't know the contents of that letter. You want to know how long it happened? You want to know when it happened? 1999. If I forced to give you slap on a Sunday morning, will you still come to church? You want the anointing? You want the empowerment? I'm telling you how to get it. So, Elisha went via service. Via service. Sir, what do you want? What project is around? What should we do? Elisha went after Elijah. Critically went after him. He was looking for something. At the end of the day, he told him, he said, sir, he said, what do you want? I know you are looking for something. He said, double portion. <laughs> he didn't ask for double portion of anointing. He had double portion of the spirit. You know why? He assumed the position of a first son. The first son of every Israelite take double portion of the inheritance. So he says, sir, I have served you like a son, serve his father. I have followed you like a son, follow his father. Now I deserve double portion. Elijah didn't say no, you don't deserve it. Because Elijah know he has paid the price. What happened to Jehu and Hazel? Sir, do you know that it was when Elijah, Elisha was about dying in 2 Kings chapter 8 and 2 Kings chapter 9 that he said, ah! By prophecy, there are two other people that we are supposed to be anointed with me. Where are they? It was Elisha who went to anoint Jehu and Hazel at his dying age. So, this guy wasted their youthful years, their productive years, doing Oga. I'm a captain in the army. The both of them captains in the army. So they were satisfied that they were captains in the army, not knowing that their destiny were to be kings. They were satisfied just commanding a group, not knowing that their destiny were to, was to be commander-in-chief. You are satisfied with the fact that you have two shops. Not knowing that your destiny is to have a conglomerate. The reason is that you don't know how to serve. Listen to me, sir. There's nothing that provokes the anointing like service. Nothing. Nothing. Listen to me, sir. Nothing. Do you know what it will mean to this man? That before he walks into the church, what he's thinking about, you have done it. Before he walks into the church, what he's thinking about, you have done it. He doesn't think whether the mic is working. He doesn't think whether there is diesel in the generator. He doesn't think whether the, the, uh, the generator is started. He doesn't think whether the, uh, I mean the, the drum sets are good. Whether the keyboard are good. He doesn't think whether this person needs to be. He doesn't think them. All he just does is to sit down in God's presence and do his assignment. When he comes out, there is no devil that is capable of stopping you. But unfortunately, what we do in the church is that everybody wants to be the big man. Do you have what it takes to be the big man? Uneasy lies the head. Understand that in this commission, he has his assignment. His assignment is that he's the custodian of the anointing. You are the recipient of the anointing. He's carrying it, but you must be ready to receive. Many men had walked through destiny and never empowered. Why? Because they are too big to be empowered. To receive from God. God said to Samuel, to Saul, he said, when you were little in your own eyes, I raised you to be a king over my people. He said, now you are big. I'm sorry, I can't work with big people. I work with small people. You want to be empowered, please be little in your own eyes. Be little in your own eyes. Be little in your own eyes. All of us that serve my pastor, I'm the only one who is still left in ministry. The only one who is still left in ministry. The other day he came to our church preaching and he started crying. He said, neither. He was praying for me. He said, you were the most humiliated. Now you are the beat for church. He says, see what you have turned out. 
Listen to me. I said to him, I said, sir, don't be angry. <laughs> it is your punishment that polished me. It is your punishment that polished me. Listen to me, sir. Listen to me. When you get to a state where you know, <laughs> where a person will hit your back and you are excited, you are tapping something. You carry his shoe. You are excited. <laughs> something is entering me. <laughs> you, you are opportune to touch his clothes. You are excited. Something is entering me. Listen to me, sir. It will always be to you according to what you believe. You believe that every account I have with him, I am being blessed. It will be exactly that way for you. No devil can stop it. But you see, when you believe that you are mates, I believe there are schoolmates, there are bedmates, there are classmates. Okay? There's no grace mate. I could go on and on and on and show you from Genesis to Revelation that men, only but one or two, can you count that they have a personal encounter. Even after they have had that encounter, God still referred them to men to empower them. Because, that they are, because there are men that God have made custodian of his grace and his anointing. And Christ Link Assembly, God has graciously given you one. Listen to me. It's not that I cannot drive here every day. It's not that I cannot call him and say, I want to see you. But I see him probably once or twice every year. Deliberate. I don't want to be familiar. I know what I'm looking for. I know what I'm looking for. There is something I have been looking for, I saw in him. I must get it. The steps of a good man. Oh, we can back and go. Anyhow, anyhow, the steps of a good man, they are ordered by God. He has ordered my steps all the way from primitive Bariga to this place. I am not going to let go. It doesn't matter what you say. Listen to me, sir. When you, are, when, you, when you find the man that is being anointed for your empowerment, people will tell you, they will tell you he's a thief. They will tell you he's a womanizer. They will tell you he's a this. They say they saw him so, so and so place. They saw him so. It doesn't matter. Listen to me, sir. He's a human being. God doesn't dehumanize the anointed. Are you here with me, sir? <laughs> you know what I you want you want to know how I follow them? You want to know how I follow them? Poppy, yes. Sorry, are you? I'm here. I follow them by their voice. They lead me by their voice. My sheep, yes. He didn't say he, 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 he's watching every step. If he hears my voice, I'm follow. Let me tell you, sir. There are people that cannot be anointed. They can't be empowered. You know why? They want to... Who is he? They have onyoko, what I call onyoko mita. <laughs> they used to... You can't be anointed that way. Listen to me. I want to pray. Get yourself ready. Be ready to serve. Be ready to be a blessing. Be ready to be a blessing. Constantly be ready to be a blessing. Isaac... When he wanted to bless his sons. He said, Oga, I received this thing from my father. I want to pass it across to you. The baton is about to come to you. It's not for free. He said, go and get me venison. Such that I like. You know what venison? Venison is the meat of deer. You know how fast deer can be? He said, go kill it. Bring it. Cook it for me. When I eat, my soul will rejoice and bless you. You must learn to provoke the soul of the prophet to rejoice and bless you. Do you get something today? Rise up to your feet. I want to pray for some people before I go. Sir, you are a business person. You are a business person and you want empowerment. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you because Abam boy, uh, this man you're seeing here, Abam boy, wise boy, boy, seven years. Kamba boy. Seven years. I was in my August house when God called me at the age of 19. He said, you shall remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth power to make worlds. 
There's power to make wealth. There's power to make wealth. Embargoes are lifted this morning. In the name of Jesus. Limitations are taken away. In the name of Jesus. You are breaking forth. You are breaking through. Expansions are coming. Expansions are coming. Expansions are coming. In the name of Jesus. By the anointing that is upon the servant of God in this house, I decree. Your season of struggling is over. 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 I, according to the word of the Lord, Isaiah 60 verse 22. The smallest among you shall be a thousand times better from today. The little among you shall become a nation. You shall become a nation. You shall become a nation. In the name of Jesus. Please go back to your seat. Quickly those that are in career. You, are, you work in office. Come I want to pray for you. And I'm done. That career. I decree and declare your lifting. In the name of Jesus. No more will you struggle in that office. No more will you be downgraded in that office. No more will you be looked down on in that office. By the anointing and the authority that God, the mantle that God had given to our promotion has come. Your elevation has come. Your lifting has come. Your lifting has come. Be promoted now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father, because it is done. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Amen and amen.